This is Akashwani, the news read by Morgan Bagra. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will take part in the second Asia-Pacific Ministerial Conference on Civil Aviation at Bharat Mandapam in New Delhi today. The Prime Minister will proclaim the adoption of the Delhi Declaration by all the member states. The Delhi Declaration is a visionary roadmap to elevate the region's aviation sector to new heights. Civil Aviation Minister Ramohan Naidu inaugurated the conference in New Delhi yesterday. Mr. Naidu was elected the chairman of the Asia-Pacific Ministerial Conference on Civil Aviation. He called for strategic investment in the Asia-Pacific aviation infrastructure to accommodate 3.5 billion annual passengers by 2035. He emphasized that India aims to increase women's participation in the aviation workforce to 25% by 2025. The conference and the adoption of the Delhi Declaration represent a significant step forward in advancing safety, security and sustainability in the Asia-Pacific civil aviation sector. It highlights the spirit of cooperation that exists among the countries of this region. India is the fastest growing aviation market in the world and is currently the third largest in the domestic segment. In the last decade, the number of aircraft in India increased from 400 to more than 800 and airports have exponentially grown from 74 to 157. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh today asserted that the country's defence sector is moving ahead rapidly with new resolve of self-reliant India. The minister was speaking after witnessing an air show organized during the second phase of Tarang Shakti exercise, the largest multinational air exercise underway at Jodhpur in Rajasthan today. The defense minister said that Tarang Shakti is aimed at showcasing the country's military capabilities and strengthening international cooperation among the participating nations. He called upon friendly nations to elevate partnership to a new height in view of the evolving global challenges. Lauding the country's rising military might, Mr. Singh said that India's defense sector is moving ahead rapidly with new resolve of self-reliant India. Filing of nominations for single-phase assembly elections in Haryana and third and final phase of polls in Jammu and Kashmir will end today. Scrutiny of papers will take place tomorrow. In Haryana, the nominations can be withdrawn till the 16th of this month. Voting for the 90-member Haryana Assembly will be held on the 5th of November. In Jammu and Kashmir, the last date for withdrawal of candidature is 17th of September. 40 Assembly constituencies will go to polls in this phase on the 1st of October. Voting for the first phase in the Union Territory will be held on the 18th of this month and second phase will take place on the 25th of September. In the first phase, 16 assembly constituencies of four southern districts of Kashmir will go to polls. Along with these constituencies, Beach Behara will also go to polls in this phase. The 16 assembly seats in Kashmir are spread in Anantnag, Gulgam, Sopian and Pulwama districts. Star campaigners of various political parties are leaving no stone unturned to vote voters. As Beach Bihara happens to be a key constituency in Anantnag, a triangular fight is expected among Itija Mufti of PDP, the daughter of former Chief Minister Mehbuba Mufti, Sofi Yusuf of BJP and Bashir Ahmad Viri of NC Congress Alliance. A total of 1 lakh and 2,081 voters will decide the fate of these candidates. ECI has set up 125 polling stations with assured minimum facilities in the constituency. Besides, adequate security arrangements have been put in place to ensure smooth and incident-free elections. Counting of votes of for assembly polls in Haryana and Jammu Kashmir will take place on the 8th of next month. The interim government of Bangladesh has announced the setting up of six commissions to bring reform in six major sectors, including the constitution. In a televised speech to the nation last evening, Chief Advisor Professor Muhammad Yunus said, the sectors are the constitution, electoral system, the judiciary, the police, anti-corruption commission and public administration. Professor Yunus said, and eminent citizens have been appointed to head these commissions. He said the commissions are expected to start their functions from the 1st of October and are expected to complete their work within the next three months. Union Minister for Finance Nirmala Sitharaman had said that the government has been keen in promoting self-reliance of women which paves the way for their dignified living and also empowers them. That's all in this news bulletin. Namaskar. 